Check out this really cool knockout effect slash spotlight effect. I actually saw this from an article that I'm gonna link here in the YouTube description. And I suggest checking it out because it's gonna show you how to do a lot more cool things with this. But it simply involves taking basically a duplicate of a layout section, changing the top version and position absolute in some way, and then using a clip path to show it and we're also gonna make the actual knockout effect turn into a big transition upon a click. So what are the tools of choice for this particular tutorial? It is going to be HTML, CSS, along with SAS, and GSAP, or the Greensock Animation Platform. And that is it, let's get started. So we have our HTML and a CSS main.css file right here. We're using SAS and we're watching that. And we also have a live server reload happening over here in this browser. So you can see we have no HTML. Let's specify it. it's super simple. So we're gonna start off with a section element. And inside of here, we're gonna have an H1. And I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste some anchor text. There we go. I'm also gonna have a span class of hover hyphen BTN, hover button. And this is going to hold an SVG element. And really this SVG element is just copied from Figma's line tool, line arrow tool. All right, so I've pasted that in. Make sure if you do the same thing, uh, you take off the width and height attribute. And I'm also taking off the fill attribute as well. So you're not gonna see it in here when we hit save. Um, after that, we simply take this entire section and we duplicate it. Now there's only a couple differences between these two sections. So first we're going to have our class for section as overlay, all right? Now this is gonna allow us to differentiate this section element from this section element, especially in JavaScript as well. I, you could do you know the nth type in CSS, but no big deal. And then also we're gonna change this one to hover button two to allow us to specifically style this span element as well. That's the only difference. So remember we're creating an overlapping effect. There's not much difference except for the classes so that you can access them in CSS and JavaScript as you wish. And that's all we are, that's all we have rather for the CSS. Now next up, let's go to the HTML. So next up, let's go ahead and I specify some initial rule sets. We have a body element here of 100 viewport height, font family bbus, new, new a or whatever. I have that already installed. And I also have box sizing border box that comes into play just one time. I, and it just helps us fix the issue of scroll bars with uh, elements that have height and our width and padding. After that, let's go ahead and specify our section element now. Now, both of our section elements are going to consist of, and let me zoom up here simply a height of 100 viewport height as well, as well as a padding of 3M units. And inside of here, we're gonna take our font size and it's gonna be big and beefy, 5M units. So right now we have two copies right here and here and they're not different uh, and they're not stacked up on top of each other. So let's go ahead and fix that. Next up, we're gonna have our overlay, which is the second element down here. And we're gonna make that one with a background of black and a color of white. So we're simply reversing or inversing everything that's happening right here. So uh, you could do many other things. You can make it well, a lot more different. You can give it color. You can do whatever you want. This is where you could be creative. Now, in order to get it to stack on top of each other, we're gonna have a position of absolute. All right, and we're also gonna have a top of zero, a left of zero, and a width of 100% just like that. So now it's on top of the initial section element. All right, so how do we get a cutout occurring here? Well, all we have to do is put in clip path and clip path takes a number of different potential values uh, where you can change the shape. We're just gonna do a circle and it's gonna be 100 pixels large. And we're also gonna have, I. Uh, the clip path property in the circle function allows you to specify also coordinates. So 50% and 50% right here as such. So now it's only doing a cutout of our overlay or, or black uh, section element and it's 100 pixels. So we can only see this part, we don't see this text. All right, now after that, we're gonna put a transition element as well. So we're gonna say transition clip path and 100 milliseconds or so. 
And you'll see how this comes into play. Make sure we put a semicolon here and we'll save that. So this is in the future for when we actually get this thing um, to, to expand out upon a, a click essentially. Now let's also go ahead and specify a rule set for our little icon. So that's wrapped in a span element. Let's zoom up here. And in this span element, it's a width of 60 pixels, a height of 60 pixels, a border radius of 50% to round it off, a background of black, a display of flex, and this allows the icon inside of it to uh, be easily centered. We're gonna do a cursor pointer. And also, we'll take our SVG itself, and this is where we give it the color. So we're just gonna say margin, 1M units around it and fill is gonna be white. There we go, we can now see that little icon here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the actual mouse tracking to this. So we're gonna go ahead and add a script here. All right, so these two properties are right here. We simply have our span element, which is our button right here. And then we also have right here our overlay which is the black uh, copy of our content section. So now what we wanna do is add an event listener on window itself, all right? And this is a common pattern for anything you wanna do with mouse movement and controlling mouse movement, essentially. All right, so we're gonna do mouse move. We're gonna pass in our parameter of E, which will give us our mouse coordinates. So first we're gonna create um, a constant of client X and client Y, all right, equals our E. And then finally, we also specify a constant X on math.round, and this right here is very common for converting the mouse coordinates into percentage values. So we put client X here, divided by window inner width. Let me zoom out just slightly. And we multiply that by 100 to get our percentage value. Now we're going to, go, going to go ahead and copy that, and I forgot, I think it looks like I screwed something up. Uh, oh, yeah, right there. There we go. Const Y, and this will simply be client Y based on inner height. All right, great. So after we have that, we now have to import uh, GSAP, or the GreenSock Animation Platform, you can go to Google and type in GSAP3 CDN and then just copy the main GSAP library to get this following uh, code right here, the script source GSAP min right here. Of course, you can have access to the code pen as well in the YouTube description to copy and paste that in if you're following along. So now at this point, we use GSAP and I'm going to zoom up here just a bit. And we're going to say the two method, which means it's going to animate whatever we specify in the first parameter uh, to these initial values. All right, so we're gonna specify overlay, and then we put in, in the second parameter, in this object here, we put in custom data property attributes. All right, so what that means is we put in dash dash x, and then we specify a value. So we're gonna use backticks here, and we're gonna specify constant x right here as defined up above. And that's just passing that value. And then we tack on a percentage right there. And this is gonna get sent off to CSS in a second. All right, now we just replicate that. We do that for the y value as well. Put y here. And then we give it a duration of point, 0 0.3 seconds. And ease, we'll say sign out. All right. So what's happening here is in this, we're tracking the mouse move. So every time it moves everywhere somewhere, it's just spitting out a ton of different data based on the location of the mouse in the X and Y axis. And then in this right here is updating the X and Y data attributes with that X and Y value in percentage format so that we can pass it on to CSS. All right, so it sounds a little bit crazy, uh, but it'll come full circle here in a second. So we wanna go back up here, and I'm just going to copy this so we can look at the original static version versus the version we're, we're about to update here. All right, so what we do is we pass in through vars, custom properties, x, 
And then we can, in a second optional argument of our var property, we can put in a default value if this x value doesn't exist. So we'll just say 50% like it was before. And then we do the same thing on the y as well. So put a y, 50%, and that should be good to go. Look at that. Now what makes this so smooth is GSAP and the easing uh, type that we've specified onto it. And notice how there's a nice little lag. You can also adjust this lag by adjusting this parameter. So if we change it to 300, it's gonna be really slow. But if you adjust it to maybe like 30 instead, it's gonna follow it a lot quicker. So around 100 to 150 milliseconds seems to be pretty good for this sort of thing. And look at that. So let's zoom up here just a bit, you all to see this. Very cool effect. Of course, you could do a lot of other things yeah, with this circle if you want. You can make it uh, change scale and size, which the article that I mentioned, uh, it's in the YouTube description from which this was inspired. There's a lot of other things you can do for this. Now let's make the actual clickable uh, grow effect or the reveal effect take place as well. And this is very simple. So underneath here, this add event listener, we can go ahead and just add an event listener on our span element, which is our clickable element down here. So we see span.addEventListener, a click. We don't have to pass anything through it to this time. We're gonna say overlay, class list toggle is hyphen open. So now we go back here in our classes or our CSS and add a class of is hyphen open. So is open, all we have to do is adjust our clip path property. So clip hyphen path, we're gonna say circle. Now to make sure it really expands all the way out, uh, we're gonna go beyond 100%, we're gonna put in 200%, and then we're gonna say at, and then we're gonna say calc. And then we're gonna say at, and we'll just say 100% right there. So now let's go ahead and click it. And it seems pretty instant. Um, so what we wanna do is adjust our transition as well for 1.3 seconds or so. And if we want that easing to look cooler, all we have to do is add a transition timing function uh, with the cubic bezier. So transition timing function and then we add a cubic bezier. Here's some like predefined cubic beziers. The one that I wanna use for this is, has the values right here. So it's one, negative 0 0.1, 0 0.199, all right? Or 0.99 rather. So let's save that. So it kind of starts out real slow and then it kind of eases in and out essentially. And that my friends is it. Awesome, awesome stuff. Hey you, yeah, you. Do you wanna become a UI UX master? A CSS layout god? Then you should check out designcourse.com. It's my ultra custom interactive platform for learning and becoming all things awesome. Oh, and hit subscribe and leave a comment. See ya.